So for 100 GB of the data, we were able to find out, we are able to find out to use the 800 cores and 400 GB of the memory, right? So 400 GB of the memory. So these configurations are, uh, we were able to find to process the 100 GB of the data. So to optimize this one, we need to understand a few things, okay? So the first thing that we need to ask the interviewer is like whether this, uh, whether uh, the cluster is a shared cluster or not, whether it is shared or dedicated cluster. So if you were, uh, if the organization are using anything like HDFS, Hadoop uh, distributed clusters, right? So mostly they will use with the shared cluster because by the time they do not have uh, the cloud. Uh, so also still some companies are using the HDFS or Hadoop related clusters to process their workloads. So we need to consider whether it is a shared or dedicated cluster. The second one is we need to understand the criticality of the job criticality of the job, whether this job is really important and what is the impact of this job, whether, uh, you know, if, if something went wrong with the job, like uh, if it not process uh, within the uh, time, like what is happening or anything. The next thing we need to understand the SLA. Okay, so we need to understand the SLA, like what is the time that we left to process this data? Because uh, because since uh, the Spark kind of environment, uh, most, of, uh, most of the jobs and workloads will depend on the SLA times only. Okay, and the next thing is cost. So what is the cost that job has taken to process the data? Okay, so our output is, our output is, we need to find out the right configurations which can run, which can run within SLA time, within SLA and low cost. So this is a goal of any, any data engineer to find out the optimal number of configurations for the Spark job. So we need to keep this in uh, mind and idea. So it depends on all other parameter and also we have other parameter which is nothing but the use case, like uh, use case, okay? Whether uh, you know it will depend from use case to use case. So these are all the these are all the points that we need to get clarity from the interviewer. So if it is a shared cluster, so shared cluster. If the interviewer says that they are using the Hadoop related clusters and the on-premise systems, then we need to ask some other questions like what amount of the resources that we can get for this particular job? What amount of resources? Amount of resources we can get for this job. Okay, so even uh, this optimal configurations can work even in real-time cases and So please listen these points carefully. What amount of resources we can get for this job? Okay, so let's say if we'll get uh, some configurations around something like 20% of the cluster or 30% or of the cluster or maybe, you know, uh, some 5% even. So that all depends on cluster to cluster, uh, job importance, job priority, SLA time, and many things will come into the picture. If the job is not that much of a priority, even you can retry at some other point of time in a day or some other point whenever the cluster is, uh, utilization is very low, then obviously, uh, like, right, so you can keep the, your criticality is low and you can increase your SLA time is a bit like high. So if it, it's a kind of a two uh, two oppositional uh, statement, right? Like oppositional uh, points. Like if SLA, if, if you want to, to down the SLA, obviously cost is going to high and time is going to less. Right, so it's a difference between time and cost, right? Like if you wanted to reduce the time, obviously we have to use the higher resources. If you wanted to uh, use the less resources, the time is going to high, right? So it's, it's a difference between the time and time versus time versus SLA versus resources. Right. So if you use the more resources, obviously, uh, since it is a parallel processing, we can get the less SLA, uh, SLA time. If you wanted to go with the high SLA, you can use the less resources. So these two uh, points we need to uh, understand. And the next thing is we need to, uh, based on it, tough time, you will be able to know what is the 20% of the resources. Let, let's uh, let understand with the numbers. Uh, let's suppose we have 20% of the cluster resources are nothing but 50 CPUs and uh, we, we we can get the SLA as like 15 minutes. Like we need to run this job in uh, 15 minutes. Okay. So let's suppose we got these details, like how we can calculate the cluster configurations in real time is uh, like first we can have total partitions like total partitions. So total partitions are like 800. 128 MB partitions, right? So if you divide 800 by 15, you will get around 53 or 54, like 53 or we can uh, go with max like 54, uh, 54. So uh, per one minute, we need to process 54 tasks, like right? tasks or partitions partitions per minute. So one minute, we need to process 54 tasks. So since we given 20% as like 50 CPUs, we can assume it can go with uh, uh, something like 54. Okay, so 54 cores. We'll request to take 54 vCPUs. 
okay so this is the parallelism so our parallelism is 54 uh, cpus okay so if you go in that let's assume that one partition one partition takes one minute completely to process it out so for one minute we can process the 54 and for in 15 minutes 15 minutes we can able to complete all 800 partitions we can complete all 800 partitions okay so here the parallelism is 54 uh, that is the number of cores and uh, each partition takes one minute to process this is an ideal case i do not know whether really this this is going to take one minute or more than one minute so we do not know we are going with the assumption uh, numbers okay so in this case we have 54 uh, cores right so we can divide like uh, 54 and uh, each executor as an ideal number each executor can have two cores let us assume we have we'll assign two cores these are kind of a thin executor okay uh, small executors so if you can go in that way uh, like 54 by two executors which is nothing but the seven executors so we can get around 27 executors okay executors and uh, we can give four, four gigs of memory so each executor has four gigs okay four gb memory then it will be 27 into 4 okay which is obviously 108 gb okay so 108 gb of the memory like if you uh, this is in the case of thin executor we can also go with the uh, uh, max executor like max we can go for five cores uh, okay uh, five cores per executor or even you can go with the 10 cores too uh, that depends on your job and uh, uh, how, how the job is going to take whether it is memory oriented or computer oriented so depend on it you can choose like uh, you, you can increase or decrease so at max i can go uh, like you know uh, the cores i can go up to like eight cores okay so this is one case where we can try to see how much time that it is going to take okay uh, the second case i'll take uh, each executor each executor this is a fat case i'm going to assign some um, 10 or 8 i can assign each executor as like 8 cpu so that means that means 54 by 8 so we have around 6.75 around 6 okay we can give uh, 6 uh, executors okay 6 or 5 executors you can consider so here in this case since we are giving 6 executors so each executor can uh, have like you know memory memory executor memory sorry executor memory so executor memory we can give uh, like you know um, so each executor 8 into 2 GB which can get around 16 gigs okay 16 gigs of memory executor memory is like 16 GB executor cores are like 8 and total we have a 6 executor so with this we if we can uh, configure this one and we can try to run the job and we see uh, whether this can works or not so this is the uh, another case like fat executor and we can also take the medium executor so in case of the medium executor we can um, take something like uh, the 54 CPU and half of it like around 8 GB and uh, 4 cores okay so each uh, so case 3 case 3 we can take each executor executor each executor uh, memory is 8 gigs okay and cpu is 4 gigs 4 cpu okay so if you can um, try to use this as well and we can try to uh, try to run this and then we can see so so we can calculate these three cases like the first case with the uh, uh, case one okay case one with 27 executors 27 executors and case two with the uh, six executors and case three will get like so half of it is nothing but 12 executors 12 executors okay so uh, you can try to execute us okay <clears throat> so we can try to execute all these cases and we'll see what is the, what is the performance that you can get it and uh, we can see the uh, all those things like uh, we can see the uh, executor uh, resources utilization resources utilization like cpu memory 
okay so we'll see that and based on it we can try to adjust the cpu and memory related like if we can see the data dog matrix or spark ui or uh, uh, some other uh, metrics right like uh, jvm metrics if you see this jvm matrix after running the job we can decide whether we need to increase the memory uh, or uh, cpu to execute it or we can decrease it so so here i am not including the driver configurations this is a note like not included included the driver configs so driver configs are same like executor config like we uh, the ideal case like we can give we can keep one executor separate that is for the uh, driver related i'm not uh, i'm not included those configuration out here okay so we need to include that as well and also we need to uh, understand the oh, memory overheads as well so we need to increase the memory overhead so uh, so these are the config that we can uh, keep it uh, so to understand whether the job uh, executes in a better way okay so apart from that uh, we also have other configuration related partitioning pruning shuffling uh, partition pruning uh, shuffle uh, compressors and shuffle uh, file compressor okay so multiple configurations are available so we can also take a look of that one so by, by implementing all this configuration that that uh, depends on your job so by implementing all these things we'll get to know whether which configurations works for this job so if you can apply this one right so we can able to execute this job in 15 minutes like uh, in the before uh, case like if you can uh, go with like 800 cores we may be executing like you know five minutes or ten minutes no, five, no, not even uh, more than five minutes because we are throwing more resources to the job uh, of course another note po another point that i wanted to highlight is if you throw more resources to the job uh, also won't help all the times throwing more resources more resources to the job also won't help all the time so sometimes it can help but sometimes it not but most of the times it do not help to give the more resources of the job okay so so the, uh, this is how we can uh, calculate in the case of a shared cluster if you like the content please give a like and uh, add a comment if you have any doubt or any other concerns in the video or if you wanted to uh, if i missed out any of the configuration please let me know in the comment section uh, thank you